Meet Bob and Ross. Howdy, partner. Hello there. They have no clue where the boss is. Okay, well, actually, they have one clue. But they decide not to make use of it. Frankly, I don't know where the boss is either. But I know where it isn't. And in a lot of cases, that knowledge can lead me right to the boss. If you want to know how I know, this video is for you. After you get your first clue, some areas of the map will be grayed out. Meaning, the boss can't be there. But there is some additional information hidden in that. What the game is not telling you is that the boss will also not not be anywhere next to the grayed out areas that you get from your first clue. And this is important. This only applies for the first clue. So what do I mean by next to? I mean if a grayed out area and an active area, so an area that is not grayed out yet, share a border the boss will not be in this active area. And again, keep in mind, this goes only for the first clue. What can we do with that info in this example? A hell of a lot. You see Bob and Ross going to Moses next? Well, they won't be killing any bosses over there, that's for sure, because Moses' poultry is next to the grayed out area of King Snake Mine. And it's a good thing Bob and Ross didn't split up so that one of them could check Stanley Coal Mine because the same concept applies there. Now if you apply this knowledge to the whole map after your first clue, you'll get a pretty good idea of where you'll find the boss and which compounds you can skip to avoid wasting time. In this example we will get our tokens in the center of the map and you can bet there will be some chaotic PvP action along with it because all teams will probably arrive at the same time. Let's go through some other quick examples. We started at Fort Bolden and went to Darren Shipyard next. As you now know and would have known beforehand, checking Darren Shipyard was a waste of time. Except for if you're checking spawns to get some early PvP going. What we should have done was going straight to either Seven Sisters Estate or Pelican Island Prison. Because these are the two compounds that are not next to a grayed out area after the first clue. Next example. In this case you can strike out a lot of compounds after the first clue. While our teammate is obviously going for some bossless PvE action in Lower Desal, we are heading straight to Fork River Fishery because that's one of the closest places to us where the boss could actually be at. The other option would be Reef's Quarry. It's kind of a gamble at this point, but at least you're making progress in both cases. And if you hear gunshots from any of these two directions, I would always decide to go there. They could be fighting the boss. Okay, the last one is another good example of saving time. Going from Ellen and Sons Fish to Blanchard Graves takes very long. So it's good to know when you can skip this compound, like in this case, because Blanchard is next to a greater area. So are Darrow Livestock and Port Reeker, which means the boss will be either at Raynard Miller Lumber or Scott lake. It is pretty simple as you can see. Alright, I hope this helped and good luck with predicting your future boss locations. I was always scared of playing solo against trios but when I tried for the first time it went surprisingly well. Check it out next.